Hi, dear uh, readers, subscribers, users of social media focused on science, on biology. Uh, I would like to share with you today the opinion, uh, a view just published this month in uh, biology, biology renowned biology journal. Nature Reviews Molecular Cell Biology by uh, professor from Great Britain, Robert Insel, who works in School of Cancer Sciences in University of Glasgow uh, in UK. Uh, it is his text, it is his opinion. Uh, article is entitled Science Twitter. Navigating Change in Science Communication. Uh, I totally support uh, Professor Robert Insel's view and opinion. I would like to share it with you. So my function here is just reading through the text, sharing the text with you. Uh, and making it available to a broader audience of subscribers of social media who are interested in science. I don't have any copyrights for this text. I don't have any permission uh, to spread uh, his text from Robert Insel. It's my own initiative to share this view, which I find very, very timely uh, view with you. My name is Dr. Alex Sopko. I am also a molecular cell biologist. Uh, Happen to work in the same field where Robert Insel made uh, very great contributions until now. But this topic is about science communication. So let me start. Science Twitter navigating change in Science Communication, Nature Reviews, Molecular Cell Biology, published February 2nd, 2023. Twitter has become an increasingly influential tool in science communication. With the ongoing changes in management, the future of science Twitter is uncertain, and other platforms may succeed it. Whatever happens, it is clear that social media are good for science and here to stay. Science and social media. The media like to portray scientists as a rather antisocial, desiccated individuals hiding in ivory towers. As in any real scientist knows, this is the opposite of reality. Science is highly social. And scientists need communication and creativity to survive. After all, if you can't persuade your peers that your work is important, you are doomed to irrelevance. If you can't see any giants, you can't stand on their shoulders. And most of the measures of excellence that we struggle against think cetacean counts are really measures of how far people are talking about our work. Recently, social media has become a key tool in connecting scientists. We use it to show off our work, discuss publishing, careers, science, politics, everything. All the social media players, Twitter has been overwhelmingly the most important. Facebook, for example, is more homely and restricted to a close circle of friends. TikTok is funny but lightweight and no place for real science. Twitter has combined a format that encourages near-life discussions with an exceptionally broad reach. It allows university principals and the funding body directors to communicate with academics, including PhD and undergraduate students, with advantages to 
everyone. It provides a sense of community to a group that is too large for traditional interactions and has been broken by lockdowns and travel restrictions. But above all, readers are exposed to different science and scientists than they are used to, and new discoveries and publications spread widely and very fast. But the change is in the air, and it doesn't seem positive for science. After acquisition by Elon Musk, the Twitter app and the site themselves still work, but are at risk uh, from loss of the software engineers that maintain them. Existing management and the regulation frameworks have broken with the potential return of abusive people and aggressive science deniers. Many of the key users are appalled and have vowed to move to other platforms. Will they succeed? Will Twitter still be the platform of choice in a few years? Or will social media's influence begin to wane? Science Twitter, the good. The key to using Twitter is who you choose to follow. As a new user, you will see sports and politics, not science. But as you follow accounts that interest you, the central Twitter server suggests other users with similar interests, which focuses what you are shown in the future. The biggest accounts may have millions of followers in the fields most frequent by scientists, universally known as science Twitter. Thousands of tens of thousands are more common. If you tweet interesting things, people may follow you. It typically starts with only friends and colleagues, but over time you make connections with shared interests and mutual follows. What can this expanding network help you with? Almost everything you want to achieve in science. First, as you might expect, social. Speaking for myself, I have made new friends in my own field, in related fields that I should have known, and I have rediscovered old friends and colleagues. Some I have encountered in person, after online invitations. With others, I have had long conversations spanning several months without ever meeting. All are wonderful, people I'd never have met without social media. Whole meetings have been arranged from scratch and with no time other than scientist meeting. As a speaker, I have now been introduced several times from my Twitter uh, persona rather than my CV. This is a great improvement. My science interest and opinions are far more informative than my job history, so these introductions were more interesting for the audience useful for me and led to yet more and better communication after the talks. But there are technical as well as social advantages. If you join the right circles, social media is a sea of new and exciting publications you would not normally see, images from the cutting edge of science and above all ideas. Advice on measuring protein-protein interactions? There are experts posting most days. The most up-to-date way to calculate similarity between DNA sequences? Likewise, I have found new clones for signaling probes that improve my group's experiments. Equally vital, I have read new hypotheses that change my interpretation of my own data. Science Twitter, the ugly there are, of course, negatives. Discussions conducted on screen can often turn rude or abusive without the social restraints of normal human interaction. Some users seem to exist only to provoke confrontation and abuse. 
in disputed areas, for example, immunology and vaccination. Many accounts are suspected to be only impersonations of users, automated, paid or just maliciously muddying the waters of debate. In more political areas, even in science, pointless or aggressive arguments frequently dominate thought. My strong advice to any potential Twitter user is to t stick to science and avoid arguing with deniers and bad actors. The old adage about never fighting with a pig. You both get filthy and the pig likes it that way. Holds true. In other words, never feed the trolls. A more subtle criticism is about scholarship. Social media favors a certain type of science that looks like social media in general, flashy, visually attractive, not too thoughtful. Twitter is a fine place to puff your results, but it's hard to find an audience for polite, technical critics. Wow factor always trumps mixed measures. Likewise, in contested areas, be the scientific questions or finding issues, there is a constant risk of self-sustaining negativity in which an unpopular or poorly expressed opinion generates a stream that slides from disagreement to personal abuse. Despite these negatives, Twitter has been a strong positive for science communication, and hopefully it can remain so. But is Twitter doomed? And are there alternatives? Multiple threats to Twitter have emerged following its recent takeover. Restriction on misinformation, for example about vaccines, have been stopped, and a mob of unpleasant constraints have been readmitted. Consequently, ad advertisers have deserted the platform, threatening the finances that kept it running. Similarly, the aggression and unpleasantness of the contrarians can push scientists away from Twitter. Even before the recent takeover, I have known many scientists driven off by unreasonable hostility from small but aggressive and vocal groups. This leads to several threats to science Twitter. First, it may just run out of money and somehow collapse. Equally, without software engineers, it could just become slower and more unreliable until users abandon it. A more troubling scenario is that the most interesting contributors move on. Science Twitter doesn't, in general, like the new face of the platform and a high proportion of scientists have discussed living. If this snowballs, uh, Twitter will rapidly become pointless for scientists. We will have to go somewhere else. The most likely candidate is a system called Mastodon. Mastodon looks like Twitter and on first sight behaves like it, but works differently. There is no central server, but rather a universe of federated servers with different owners and shared protocol. This has advantages. Nobody owns it, so nobody can sell it as they have Twitter. However, the lack of the server has disadvantages with nothing to suggest things to you. You must explicitly choose everyone you follow. This makes interesting things spread slower and unusual things hard to see, for it also stops your attention being swamped by fluff and politics. Social media has been boon to science, and it's hard to see this stopping anytime soon. The shape it takes in the future and the dominant provider, Twitter, Mastodon or something unforeseen are unclear, but scientists should engage with it. If it suits you, use it and it will 
Rivardio. Robert Insel, School of Cancer Sciences, University of Glasgow, UK. Nature Review, Molecular Cell Biologist, article entitled Science Twitter Navigating Change in Science Communication. Read by a doctor of biology, 